Good morning. Welcome to Living the Tiny Dream. Today we have a special episode. We have to move the tiny house. So we wanted to show you guys what it's like to prepare the tiny house for moving, what it's like to unhook from all of our connections, and to park and reconnect at our new spot. Stay tuned until the very end. Thanks. I personally like to start my morning off with a protein coffee or coffee of some sort. Simeon is here. Being <laughs> Simeon. Say hi to the camera. Hi. Hi, Simeon. <laughs> what are you doing to help out today, Sim? Kids are obnoxious. Yeah, I want them. Okay. While we were at school yesterday, Dad did some stuff outside. He recorded that. This space. <laughs> and also hooked up the tiny house to the truck. So today we will be kind of taking anything down that can break and fall and preventing big things from moving, locking things down, and getting ready for that move. While Sabine and the kids are at their homeschool co-op, that gives me time to start packing up the outside living space, taking up the wooden tiles, turf, and any random toys lying around. It's kind of funny to see the number of folks that stop and take pictures of the house, or when they see me outside, they are dying to know if I built the house myself. Once the surrounding area is somewhat clear, a quick check of the tires, and it's time to lift the house, starting from the back so that the house can tilt slightly backwards when I'm lifting up the front. This is my least favorite part. This manual crank has me rethinking life choices, especially when I see these RVs with automatic lifts. Just think happy thoughts. <laughs> that leaves enough space for me to back up the truck and connect. make sure we do is uh, making sure all of the dishes are clean and put away right now the dishwasher is going so obviously we would wait until that's done before we unhook um, and then I'll show you guys what we do to secure the cabinets um, as well as all of my plants those that are propagating that kind of thing so here goes location we were parked at and we just instantly connected and that's the thing about this lifestyle um, RVing and also because we're similar in the sense that we move around kind of the same way is you meet a lot of unique people that you wouldn't otherwise meet and you form these connections and literally everywhere we've parked um, at least one of our neighbors we've kept in contact with now if you've been following us for a while you know that I have a couple of plants and I love them so I take the time to tuck them away and make sure they're secure for the move. So this most certainly is a different perspective, but I do take any opportunity to clean. I do enjoy cleaning, but more so I enjoy a clean home. I don't know, it just helps me think more clearly. I can't operate in a unclean and cluttered house. All right, so right here is where it locks. So you'll hear a little click. After I clean and disinfect the sink, I tuck the Berkey away first and then add the plants around it. John said, sights ready. 
it's clearly moving day for everyone. It's the first, which the first is moving day for lots of people. So there's a lot of action outside and we just got notification that our site is ready. So we're gonna be moving. It's pretty much just gonna keep things from falling over. We make sure that we lock and secure the barn door in the bedroom. Then we go around making sure all of the lights are screwed in tightly. As much as we like for this to be all professionally shot and go super smoothly and all that, now we're down to the wire. So, a few things we do, hook the TV up there. And I flip it the other way so that the hooks don't destroy my floors. Oh, that would have been a problem. Almost left the mirror. We're gonna lay her down. Lay her down. Now just pop these steps up. Unscrew the frame and pack them into the SUV. Hey Ma. Yeah. Uh, propane is off. Do you mind just go ahead and uh, do the thing? Do the thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. So whenever we disconnect or shut off the propane, we got to make sure the line is completely dry. Be moving around with propane. And there you have it. Almost ready to move. So I'll raise the stabilizers and disconnect the water, power, and sewer connections. Sanaa, Sim, what's, what's happening right now? What are you doing? You're getting yourself dirty, knuckleheads. Unless you're parking in a pull-through site, backing the tiny house up is one of the trickiest parts. In the future, maybe we'll invest in some backup cameras, but for now, we use the neighbors and a lot of patience. Help Nani, good job. Oh yeah, teamwork. Two hands, Nani, lift with that left hand. Now we've been at Tiny Living for about two years now and we've learned a thing or two about setting up. While we find that most sites are pretty level, this site in particular had us on a gangsta lean. So the first thing we do is pull out our level to determine where we need to make adjustments. And we do that by using leveling blocks. Okay, look at that. So we are totally leveled. This is Stefan's favorite part. Hmm? Here, here's our problem. Because so that broke. The shirt's coming off. The 
While our builder did provide all of the basic connections for our home, we've upgraded and added some additional items that we'll share in the description below and discuss at the end of this video. Before we connect our electric to the new meter, we first plug in our surge protector, turn on the breaker, and wait for the all green. Our home requires a 50 amp connection, so since each connection has unique prongs, we know which one to use. Next. We'll hook up our sewage, which consists of our gray water, which is runoff from the sinks in the shower, and our black water, which is the sewage that runs from the toilet. They both merge and terminate into the ground connection. Both use gravity, so it has to run at a downward slope into the ground connection. We use a Camco sewage support hose. Finally, we attach a water filter, elbow connection, at the house and sometimes a water pressure regulator before connecting the water hose to the house. Because we're in Arizona and ooh, the summertime madness be real. So we already had a hose burst Boy, on it. We didn't need no water heater. Right, so yeah. It was like burning hot to the point where we would burn our hands if we weren't careful. Let's see. All good. All right, unlock that. Uh, propane is on. And Turn the thing on. Yeah. Okay. A general rule of thumb is if you run anything off of propane in your tiny house like we do, you'll want to have one propane tank hooked up to the house and a backup one for the time that you're cooking or taking a shower and the propane tank runs out. That way, you can easily switch to the full tank. Mm -hmm. It's coming together nicely. So what are we getting ready to do? Put out these lovely stairs. Yeah. These in this area, the oh, stairs, they go. I'm excited. All right, well, why don't you grab the turf first and... Uh, I can do that. Yeah. I got strong muscles. I believe you. Probably should be dusted too. How about you let me take care of the rest? Got it. Watch it. Watch this. Watch this. Don't let it hit the floor. Watch this. It's gonna be harder to pick up off the ground. Oh, 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 oh. Thanks again for watching this video. We hope it answered a lot of questions about the logistics about moving and setting up a tiny house. If you're interested in the products we showed during this video, check out our website and the links below. You'll also see many popular space saving items throughout our house and a few travel nurse must haves. I don't know how I feel about this because I'm eating chicken wings and I'm black and you know what people are gonna say about that. What? That you have good taste? Yup. But that is how you disconnect and reconnect and move your tiny house on wheels. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye!